I'm going to show you how to use the journal text sledgehammer add-in to help you create journals a little more efficiently and edit things and bring text in um, and even PowerPoint slides and things like that into a jump journal. So what I'm using, uh, where I've gotten the jump journal text sledgehammer is from the community. Brady created this add-in and posted it on our community. And you can get to it by going to the community.jump.com and then journal text sledgehammer add-in is what you'd wanna search for or any part of that and then you'll find this journal text sledgehammer. So to use an add-in, if you've never downloaded or opened an add-in before, once you have, you're gonna have this add-ins tab on your jump menu bar. If, you don't, if you've never used an add-in before, this won't exist yet, but it will appear as soon as you download your first add-in. So what you do is just download this and then click to open it, and it's gonna prompt you and say, do you wanna install this? You say yes, and then it lives in your copy of Jump forever. So you would install this Jump Journal Text Sledgehammer, and then it's gonna live here in this Add-ins tab. So what I have open on the side is a, a simple journal, and then here in the Add-ins, I'm gonna open the Journal Text Sledgehammer. So here's the Journal Text Sledgehammer. And you can do a number of things here. So at the top, you're gonna to see a list of any open journal. So I only have one open journal, so it's very simple. I know I'm working on that journal. That's what's clicked here. If I had multiple journals open, I would click the one I wanna be applying changes to. And then I can do things here like open all outlines or I'll click close all outlines. That closes all of my outline items or open all outlines. This can be really helpful if you wanted to, for example, save this out as a PDF or as PowerPoint. You want all the outlines open in order to save everything that's hiding underneath them. So using open all outlines and then going to file and save as and saving as, for example, a PDF this is now gonna save a PDF with all the, uh, the information that's hiding in those disclosure buttons will, will also be included in the PDF. And then the top tab for text box controls, this allows me to edit things that are text boxes. So here's a text box. This is just a box that has text in it. And so if I don't click on anything, it's gonna apply the changes to every text box. Or if I do click on something, it's gonna apply the changes just to the one I have selected. So I could do things like change the text color. So it just changed it to black, or I could change the text color uh, back to blue. I could apply a background color to that. This is gonna be hideous if I do this, but let's uh, apply a, a, a lighter blue background color. And so that did it everywhere that there's a text box. You can now see all the hidden text boxes that I added in order to make this more visually appealing. I put some extra blank spaces in some text boxes and you can see that because it um, applied the background color to those as well. So if I wanna use the default background color, now I've gotten rid of that again. You can also change things like the font name, the font style, the font size for various items. So here I would be looking at the text boxes. So again, I can click on one if I want to change the font size just for that one thing. Um, I can also insert line feeds, which adds a little bit of extra space below any text boxes, or I can remove them. And then I have the tab for the outline box controls. This tab lets me also change fonts here. This is going to change the text in these outline items, these top level outline items. So again, if I wanted to change the color, I could change uh, these guys to blue, or I could put a background color, again, of light blue on those, uh, on those disclosure sort of outline level items. That's not very attractive, so again, I'll go back to the default color. Again, I can change the font size um, and so on. And then in the utilities, there are a bunch of really helpful tools if you are trying to get a lot of information into a journal at once, or if you are um, trying to organize things in, in various ways. These, these tools will be very helpful in general. The journal packager will help you take your journal and any referenced files and package them all in one place. Unify paths, this is really useful for, so in this particular journal, each of these disclosure items has one linked file underneath it, a PowerPoint slide, a document, another document. If I right click on this and edit and click set script, this is gonna let me look at what the script is behind that button. 
you can see that there's a path directing it to where to open this file and then the name of the file genomicsoverview.powerpoint. This path is going to break. I'll say okay if I click on this that path doesn't exist on my computer so this is not going to work. So if I click on this I'll get an arrow that error that path is invalid and I'll show you where the document actually is. It's in this folder. This is where this journal is saved as well. So in this folder I have the journal itself and then I have the three linked documents. So I could figure out what the actual path is and change that or I could make it a relative path because as long as you have the journal and any documents it references in the same folder I could actually remove the path name and it would jump would be able to figure out what documents I'm referring to so I'll show you that if I go to edit and set script and I remove the path name so that I just keep open quotation marks the name of the file dot file extension quotation marks uh, and parentheses this is a relative file name now there's no path name it's relative to the location so if I say okay now I'll be able to open this because this is available um, in that relative path so if I use in the journal text sledgehammer if I use unify paths that's going to look through all the paths and all the file references here and it's going to unify them and make them in the same place so I can either pick a folder if I do that let's say okay and let's save them to um, actually let me really quickly save this journal as a, a second version so let's save this as I'll just put a two at the end so that any changes I make here won't change the actual journal, uh, my original journal. So here we go. So if I go to Unify Paths and pick a folder, and let's say I want to save this in the same folder. So this is the folder where I want all of the path names to be talking about. So this is where those that PowerPoint, this document, this document, they actually reside in this folder. So that's the folder I want to select. And now if I right click on this and go to Edit, and set script you can see that it's got a new path and that path is the correct path that's the correct path on my desktop so now this link will work because it's the correct path and you can see the same thing here if I go to edit and set script that's the same path to my folder where I actually have this on my desktop Another option is to use unify paths and use local references. This is what I just did by hand a moment ago. Local references just takes the path name out entirely. So if I say OK, now if I look at this edit and set script, now there's no path name. So this is a really handy way to clean up broken file extensions really quickly. Just make sure that you put everything in one folder together and you can either have the path name created automatically or you can have no path name and just have them be relative. Okay, slides into journal is a really cool one also. We have these PowerPoint slides. If I wanted to put these slides into a journal, I can save them first as an image file. So if I go to File and Save As from PowerPoint, and I decide I'm going to save these as, um, I maybe need to export these. I'm going to cancel this. So File, Export. And I'm going to export these as maybe a PNG, as PNGs. And I'd like to save every slide separately. I'm going to say export. It's going to put them in that same big folder. Each slide has been saved as a separate file in this folder. OK. So if I look back in the folder, it made a new folder, called it Genomics Overview, because that was the name of the PowerPoint, and it has each slide in it. So now I can go to slides into journal I can choose that folder that had all my slides in it I can select that folder I can call this whatever I want like genomics over view I can save them as standard aspect ratio or wide they are PNG file extension and I can say OK so now it makes me a new journal with these slides that I can click through within my new journal and this is actually going to be difficult if I wanted to move this back over into the other PowerPoint. If I use the selection tool and click on this, it's only going to save the static image of what's showing right now. 
So it's easier, oh, <laughs> genomics, I obviously misspelled that. Uh, it's easier for me if I want to use these PowerPoint slides to take this information over and just copy it here instead. So to bring this into this PowerPoint or into this journal is going to make it easier for me to be able to use this. And if I want to edit this now, I can do that by using, again, the pointer. The pointer lets you edit things and add things. The plus sign lets you move things around or delete things. OK. And then back to the sledgehammer. I can also do text into journal um, or text from journal. Text from journal is going to take the text from my journal and put it um, into, oops, sorry, what did I click on there? Text into text from journal is going to take the text and put it into a jump data table. So it just shows me all the things that I had in my um, journal. Um, scripts into table is going to take everything out of my journal and put it so I, I know everywhere that I have a script reference so that's that can be handy if I'm looking for broken links or something like that to illustrate let me close this to illustrate the last couple of things it will be helpful to open a, uh, something that's got some text in it so I'm gonna open this data set here this is the pet survey data uh, this is in the sample data directory, so if you go to help and sample data library, you'll find this pet survey data set. It's just a, a silly example of some, um, it's a fictional answers to the question, think about your cat or dog, what's the first thought to, that comes to mind? So I have a bunch of text here. If I want to be able to bring this text um, into journal, so I want all this text to come into a journal, I can click text to journal, and I can just copy all of this text. Oops. And I don't need to be copying this out of a jump data set. I can copy this text from anywhere, from a Word document, from wherever. I'm just trying to copy text. A trick you need to know is make sure that you push Enter at the end of each distinct line. So there was an Enter after this. There's an Enter after this. So my cursor needs to land on a blank line at the very end in order to bring that last line in. So I can choose to bring this in as text boxes or outline boxes. I, if there's a tab, it will. Um, be, be a text box, otherwise it would be an outline box, etc. bulleted text boxes. So I'll just say OK. And you can see I can bring a bunch of text into Jump really quickly. Here's the selection tool, so I can move around these things if I want to reorder that. I can click on it and drag it somewhere else, and so on. So that's a way to bring a lot of data in very quickly. And let's see. Column into text is the only one we haven't clicked on yet. So here we, we would need a data table with a column in it. And so I can do column into text. I can select this table. It only has one column, so that's the column I'm going to use. I'll do bulleted text and say OK. And so again, I get another way to bring the text in really quickly. So in summary, the, the journal text sledgehammer can be really helpful if you've got a lot of text that you want to bring into a journal very quickly. If you um, want to unify the paths because you've got uh, different path names and they might be breaking or you want to make sure that they're relative so you can pass the journal on with those files to someone else that they'd be able to use it on their computer also. Uh, if you want to put slides into a journal that you can click through or if you just want to edit things in the outline boxes or the text boxes, this journal text sledgehammer that Brady posted is really fantastic. So thanks to Brady and if you have any questions, certainly ask in the community. And again, to get to that add-in, go to community.jump.com and then look for the journal text sledgehammer.